Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hello, Calvary, and happy Monday. I hope that you celebrated with us this last weekend. Um, if you happen to miss Pastor Chad's message called Grace Wins, you can watch that recording on our website at calvaryaz.com. So if you can remember way back to Friday, we left the story in a bit of a cliffhanger. Eli and his sons had died, but the true tragedy was that the Ark of the Covenant had been captured by the Philistines. The Ark was to be in the tabernacle in the Holy of Holies, but now it was in enemies' hands. In 1 Samuel 5, we learn that the Philistines placed the Ark in the temple of their god Dagon. However, Dagon falls down before the Ark twice. The people find Dagon lying down before the Ark and the idol's head and hands are severed. This showed the supremacy of the God of Israel. Not only did Dagon fall before the Ark, God afflicted the people of Ashdod with tumors and calamities. So they decided to relocate the Ark to Gath. Then they relocated it to Ekron. But each of these cities suffers similar devastating consequences. In desperation, after seven months of affliction, we find the Philistines' response. It's in chapter 5, in verses 11 and 12. They sent, therefore, and they gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place, that it may not kill us and our people. For there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of God was very heavy there. The men did not die. The men who did not die were struck with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. In 1 Samuel 6, we learn that the Philistines send the ark back to Israel on a cart pulled by cows, guided solely by God's direction. The cows lead the ark straight back to Israel to the town of Beth Shemesh where it is joyfully received. However, some of the people of Beth Shemesh are struck down because they open up the ark to look inside of it when they shouldn't have. Listen to 1 Samuel 6, 19 through 21. In 1 Samuel 6, 19, it says, And he, that's God, struck some of the men of Beth Shemesh because they looked upon the ark of the Lord. He struck 70 men of them, and the people mourned because the Lord had struck the people with a great blow. Then the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? And to whom shall, we, and to whom shall he go up away from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of kiriath Jerim, saying, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to you. So the men of Beth Shemesh ask, who is able to stand before the Lord? Dagon, the false god of the Philistines, obviously was not able to stand. The Philistine nation was not able to stand before God. Even God's own people who rejoiced at the ark's return weren't able to stand. I think another way we could ask this question is, who is worthy? Who is worthy to stand before God? The book of Revelation gives us an answer to that question. It is Jesus, the lamb who was slain. Revelation 5.12 says, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Today, we don't stand before the Lord in our own strength. We don't have a relationship with God because we follow the law or follow the rules related to the proper handling of the Ark of the Covenant. We stand before the Lord in a new covenant created by Jesus Christ. He died for us and rose again so that through faith we can receive that free gift of a relationship with God. So 
we not only can stand before him through Jesus, we worship him in spirit and truth. We live as his adopted children. We can serve him as his servants. We talk to him as friends. And we look forward to an eternity with him. If you've been encouraged by today's word, would you like it, share it, or leave a comment below? And have a blessed day, Calvary.